Hi, I'm Heather Staines, the Director of Partnerships for Hypothesis. Today I want to recreate for you a flash presentation that I gave in London in December at the STM Innovations meeting. I hope you'll find it useful. The research life cycle as we know it today, well, it's pretty broken. There's a lot of proprietary tools, things are siloed, researchers have to enter the same information over and over again, often cutting and pasting. It's a mess. It's enough to make you want to pull your hair out. What if I told you about a tool that you could use throughout the entirety of the research life cycle, that you'd have access to all the digital notes you've ever made on the web, private, public, and in groups, and that you could use it to filter, search, and explore in the creation, submission, revision, collaboration process, and you could even use it for deep linking. Welcome to Open Standards-Based Annotation. You can create a free account at our website today. Publishers and platform hosts can embed the free version of Hypothesis to give their users a great annotation experience. And if you want something a little bit more customized, we can work with you to create a branded, moderated annotation layer. Here's a shot of my Hypothesis profile page. I have access here to every article I've ever annotated. I can get back to them. I can see what I've written. I can click on my tags. I can filter and explore. I don't have to worry about ever losing access to my articles again. If I remove my name, I have access to the public annotation stream. Everything that's been annotated publicly anywhere around the world, I can explore annotations made by others. I can take a look at the articles that they're looking at. All of this is included in the Crossref event data and indexed by Google. In February 2017, the W3C approved annotation as a web standard. This means in future versions of browsers, you'll be able to select your annotation client in the same way that you tell your browser now what your preferred search engine is. It'll be just that easy. We recently passed 2.3 million annotations and we're going strong. We crossed 1 million in February 2017, 2 million in October 2017. We even had a couple of 10,000 annotation days. We're looking forward to our 3 millionth annotation happening sometime in early 2018. I want to talk about annotation and how it can be used throughout the entire research life cycle with particular attention to preprints because I don't have a slide on that. We'll be providing annotation capabilities for both BioArchive and for the new AGU ESOR preprint server. Annotation and pre-review is a frequently requested use case. Here's an example of how eJournal Press has integrated Hypothesis and is available to any of the publishers who are using their platform. We're in touch with other art manuscript submission systems today to include hypothesis and other aspects of peer review. Post-publication discussion is another frequent use case. We're working with publishers to create a branded, moderated annotation layer visible by default on their content, so users no, need, no longer need to upload a PDF to another site in order to collaborate on top of it. Publishers can have multiple layers of annotation on their content. They can decide who gets to see annotations and who gets to create them. You might have one layer, for example, for general discussion that anyone can join, and maybe some limited layers, maybe one limited just to authors annotating on their own work, maybe one for exposing peer review summaries. The dashboards across these different layers can be as broad or as narrow as you like. You could have one per book, one per journal title, you could gather together a selection of journals in a similar subject area or have it go across the entirety of your domain. It's a great way for readers to explore. Authors can use Hypothesis to connect their research to supplemental materials and updates, even if the material is, is located on many places across the web. They can use Hypothesis to correspond with readers or with reviewers. You can also use Hypothesis for the automated annotation of entities. 125 journals in neuroscience use research resource IDs for reproducibility. You can have material from an external database pop up along the side of your content in the form of an annotation card. Experts can also use Hypothesis to connect resources across the web, for example, for fact checking purposes. You can link readers to a piece of content in a citation or in an annotation card and take them exactly to the piece of content that you're referring to. Hypothesis is also being used all around the world in the classroom. We have an integration with the Canvas LMS and other learning management systems coming soon. It's great for collaboration and close reading assignments for students. Professors are very excited about it. Hypothesis is a nonprofit, and we think this is critical for the future annotation ecosystem. We can maintain an independent voice. We're not beholden to shareholders, but to our publisher partners, and we cannot be acquired by your competition. We will stay independent. I want to end today by telling you that it's not just about annotation, it's about the technology behind it. 
When you think of the web in terms of page level URLs, page level addresses, it's what we've had. We, today with the Hypothesis technology, we can have more. We can create a unique persistent web address for a sentence, for a paragraph, for a cell in a VSV, CSV file, for a word. For linked data, this is gonna be absolutely essential. And the greatest thing is you don't have to retag or enrich your content in any way. It will just work. Thank you very much for listening. Don't hesitate to contact me if you've got any questions about Hypothesis. And more importantly, please visit our website to sign up for your free account today. Thank you so much.